I have to admit that I am obsessed by batteries. It's my mother's fault. She bought me this little book back when I was about six years old, and I've never looked back. I especially liked this charger, as it gives me loads of information, including the internal resistance of the cell, which is really important. The only thing I don't like about it is that it's only suitable for these cylindrical 18650 and similar cells. I was really looking for something truly universal, and I found it. This is the device. This is a multifunction battery meter, and I'll be describing its functions in this video today. What you actually receive is the module itself, and this module is available in many different variations, most of which come with a shunt of some kind. This is the 200 amp shunt that I've got in here. There are available up to 300 amps. This unit is capable of measuring up to 200 volts DC. In addition, there are variations of this module which work on AC power as well to be able to measure and monitor that in your kilowatt hours, etc. As you see, it comes with a little diagram on the back there. Also, it comes with sheets of very detailed instructions, uh, very detailed uh, if you're as myopic as I am. The case then, thankfully, somebody has been kind enough to upload this to the Thingiverse website where I downloaded and 3D printed this from. You can also 3D print the base for it uh, once I've finished it. For my purposes, rather than hardwiring everything, I've put some terminals on to connect whatever type of battery I feel like testing at the time and then just these two cables to be able to connect to a load of some description. At the moment I'm just using this 10 ohm resistor as a load. The wiring then is quite straightforward and described well on there. A little terminal block and the cables, apart from the thick cables here, are all supplied with the unit. If your battery, like the first one that I showed you, is less than 8 volts, then you power the unit from an external supply. Now I'm just using my bench power supply at the moment as I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do that in the future. What I might do is just to use a single lithium ion cell, the thing takes virtually no power at all, and will work down to 3.3 volts. That should work out quite well. With the physical description of the unit out of the way then, let's see how we can set it up to monitor our various batteries or cells. Before talking about programming the unit, let's just go through the display and see what it's showing us. At the top here is the actual input voltage from the battery or cell in this case, uh, just a little over 4 volts. The amount of milliamps, the current draw, depending on the load. We saw that was a 10 ohm load. Then we have the representation in watts and then in watt hours. At the top here we have the accumulated milliampere hours. So this is how much the cell has discharged so far. And the external resistance. We saw that it's a 10 ohm resistor, therefore no surprise. It says it's 10.6, 10.7. Here we can see the measurement of the internal resistance of the battery or cell under test. Here it's showing 450 odd milliohms. That value will normally increase as the state of charge, indicated here, goes down. Generally speaking, I always measure my internal resistance when the cell is fully charged. And finally at the bottom we have the running time. So it's been running for an hour and 25 minutes. To set these values up then, we start by long pressing the button here and we get into the set voltage menu. We can then cycle through setting amps, clearing the energy meter, similarly clearing the capacity and finally clearing the remaining time. We go back to set, we hold that and now we can see the set voltage. I have set this up previously to 4.2 volts. You can see it cycling through the different display digits there. The reason it's got two lots is that if you want to measure up to 200 volts you have to change the second display there if you like. 
this last digit up to a 1 and then it will go from 100 volts upwards. That then is the battery voltage or cell voltage. Long pressing again gives us the discharge voltage. This is how the state of charge graph works then if you like. We have at the top the fully charged voltage 4.2 and the value that I'm going to set at 3.3 volts for the discharged state. There are then 10 LEDs that give us uh, an indication in 10% increments of the state of charge or discharge depending on your point of view. Long pressing again gets us back to the main screen. Just before we move on then one other important thing that we need to change long press get into the menu here and it's this set current long pressing that gets us to a selection which is dependent upon which current shunt you have installed. In my case as I said this is a 200 amp shunt therefore we set that to 200. The other available options are 300, 100 and 50. It's important to leave that at 200 otherwise the indicated current will be wrong. Going back to the main screen here we saw that this is indicating correctly at 300 odd milliamps. This value, if you've set the shunt value wrong, will be maybe a quarter or a half of what it should be. So just pay attention to that. If you get some strange current reading there, double check that you've selected the correct shunt. Quite simple then to set up the voltage, the fully charged voltage, and the value that you select for when it's discharged. There are quite a lot of applications using this in uh, solar installations. That's why this display is very useful to give you a very quick visual indication of the state of charge of your, of your batteries. Which leads me on to something. You can see my load here. People have asked, is there a way to turn the display off? Clearly, if you're not powering the unit from an external supply, you don't want it to drain any more power than is absolutely necessary. And if you press the button here, the display goes off. Um, people have asked, well, does the, the, the thing keep running, keep tally of the state of charge with this display off? And the answer to that is yes. Even with the display off, it will keep tally of the uh, capacity in use and we can prove that I have a clamp meter here if I put that over the lead we can see it's indicating 370 odd milliamp hours as on the display there if I then switch the display off we can still see that the unit is under load so yes don't be concerned you can you switch the display off and it's not going to affect the readings in any way. Finally then I'd like to show you another way that I'm going to be using this meter in conjunction with my electronic load. If you're unfamiliar with this unit I have a, a video that I've done on it. I've changed this cell for one that's been charged but we can still see that it has the numbers from the previous test I'll show you how to clear those readings so that we can start with a clean slate. Pressing and holding. Now we're on to clear and we just press and hold. And that has now gone to zero. We do the same for each of the other values. Now everything is back to zero. Connecting up my charged battery then we can see it at 4.13 volts and we have a full state of charge indicated. At the moment there are no resistance measurements because I haven't switched my load on. The only value we need to concern ourselves with on the load is the current which is currently, <laughs> currently set to 1 amp. If I then switch the load on we can see the 1 amp there and as I mentioned before the internal resistance is lower only 200 odd milli ohms there as the state of charge is higher. The resistance of the external load 
is given as 4.1 ohms. And now I can increase this value. So if I go up to one and a half amps, you can see the display has changed there to 1.46. And interestingly, the uh, internal resistance appears to have lowered. I think this is going to be a very interesting uh, setup that I can use to test any type of battery that I like, whether it be a lead acid or lithium ion. I hope also that you found the video of interest. Thanks for watching.